Hello, this is Ben. We have you um, yes. as a panelist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and we're hearing you just fine. So um, if and when you do want to I'm um, in during today's presentation, you should be all set. Um, in the meantime, while you're not talking, just go ahead and put your phone on mute so that we'll hear any background sound. Oh, okay. I'm doing it right now. Okay. And whenever you do want to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself, and you should be um, good starting. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Hello, thank you for attending today's session. Um, we're going to wait a few more moments just to give uh, others a chance to log in.
Hello, hello everyone. For joining us for today's webinar on the best practices for setting up the consolidated plan in action plan in the econ planning suite. Ben Stern and I work with the Cloudverse group. Before we get, I'd like to share a couple of housekeeping notes regarding today's session. This webinar is scheduled for 90 minutes. However, there is a chance that the session could run longer if needed. We are also expecting a large number of you in attendance, so all lines are muted. The session is recorded. The recording and PowerPoint slides will be made available on exchange within the following week. If you're WebEx control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, Please take note of the following. Computer video. If you'd like to change your audio settings from phone to computer, please be sure to click the Quick Start menu on the top left of your WebEx screen and then to Audio Conference section. Switch the selection from phone to computer audio. The default is set to host. Please the drop down arrow to select Presenter Panelist Host option. The q and options should be submitted through the questions pod. By default, this pod is not automatically selected. So please now take the time to locate and click on the Q&A pod so that it is added to your screen. The Q&A icon should be located within the control panel at the top right-hand side of your screen. We will be throughout today's session to answer questions that are submitted through the Q&A pod. So please submit your questions as you're thinking about them and we'll respond to them when appropriate. If we're able to get to your questions today, you go ahead and submit it through the HUD Exchange Ask a Question for the Econ Planning Suite. If you're having technical issues related to audio or screen sharing, Please also submit those questions through the Q&A pod on the control panel. Joining me today are my colleagues Rob Schrantz and Joel Warren, as well as Gloria Coates from the Office of Blocks Grant Assistance. So discussing today's objectives, we would first like to get an idea of where everyone's at in their current ConPlan cycle. If you allowed each cycle, please click the hand icon on the control panel to indicate which is most appropriate for you. Let's give a raise of, a raise of hands for who is currently in their 2015 through 2019 uh, ConPlan cycle. Okay, good number of you for 2015 through 2019, and this indicates that a lot of you are getting ready to get up for developing your 2020 through 2024 consolidated plan. Let's see who yeah, here is currently in the 2016 through 2020 con plan cycle. Okay, good number of and 2017 through 2021, 2018 through 2022, and for 2019 through 2023. Okay, those that are um, in the 2019 through 2019, 2019 to 2023, um, today's this will be directly to you as we will look through 
set up a new consolidated plan template in IDIS, and new program requirements into the contract plan, and set up a new annual action plan. This would be the second year of your action plan. So those that are currently in the 2019 to 2023 cycle, you'll be looking to create a, up your first two annual action plan. And we will be addressing that at the end of today's presentation. Time, I will like to turn this over to my colleague Rob Trump. I appreciate. It. Welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, joining today. Um, so we will, uh, uh, I'll advance the slide. Go. Uh, we have a few reminders, updates um, from HUD. I'd like to take the opportunity now that we have your attention to. Um, Remind you of a few, few things. First, uh, we do have a federal budget September 30th, uh, and we have formula year uh, FY19 formula allocations. Um, so those of you submitting uh, as soon as August, you know how much money you have, which is always nice, not always the case. We want to remind you um, in the case, um, well, it's a great notice, but HUD CPD notice 1901 uh, does uh, talk about what to do if, you, uh, if we do not have allocations. Um, and also some other really valuable information in there. Uh, remind you that the uh, drop dead statutory submission is August 16th, 2019. Um, it also talks um, about um, how to plan uh, when there's not an allocation award. Um, so I mean that you go to that, read it closely. If you do have any questions about that notice uh, about this uh, process, please uh, reach out to your CBD rep. Uh, we're not for questions about this in particular today. Uh, that out of the way, um, we'd like to get into how to actually create your con plan in IDIS. And if you have any questions, use that Q&A pod, and we'll uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. Uh, we have plenty of time at the end to answer questions, so we'll do that, uh, get to all of them as we can, time permitting. Also, remind you that I do have uh, a question for con plan. So if you have any uh, questions after this, you can on how to do something in IDS with your comp plan. Please remember we have the IDS e-comp plan. Or for e-comp plan. And, um, so uh, there are two paths to create your next comp plan. Um, you can copy or you can create a new one. So the example here is your 2015-19 uh, comp plan, this can be any comp plan period, three to five years long, long. and you can, again, uh, edit and revise, uh, copy, edit, revise, uh, or create one and enter new content. Uh, there are some pros and cons and caveats for each of these. Uh, copying is kind of handy. It migrates all the information and the narratives from your comp plan, including typos. So uh, you must review that copied information and narratives. You must update it. Uh, dates, things that have changed, you must carefully review it. Uh, let's update to the most current data set so that data will be updated um, in different sections. We'll go over those today. We want to make a note that you cannot change programs or the PHA selected if you copy. That carries over and you cannot change those things. So if for a new program, one included in the last comp plan, for example, you started Ministry ESG. Um, not copy. You need to create a new one. Also, do not use this if you need to update or correct the selected PHA. You cannot change those. A new one, you start from a clean slate, but nice sometimes. Start from scratch. Uh, the default data are loaded in there for you. You need to complete all those fields and tables. Uh, they will be blind, empty, ready for you. You can and you must select your programs and your PHA. Uh, but in either case, uh, whichever one you use, uh, you can update, copy, and paste text from, um, that you asked locally in a Word document or the Word version that you downloaded of your last comp plan. Um, either way, you can uh, copy and paste into those. You can update all those fields. It's a little handy sometimes to copy. Um, remember, if you're a new entitlement community, you have to create a new comp plan. There's nothing there to copy. Uh, if you're not sure, remember about your particular situation. Remember, we do have ask a question for econ plan, and uh, Ben will be glad to help you if you submit a question. Uh, 
right pen, and I'm going to back to you. Well, thanks, Rob, for that plug on uh, the HUDIC Change AAQ desk for Econ Planning Suite. You bet. Um, before we get into IDIS, um, we're briefly on the first way that we can create a new con plan, and that is by adding a new blank template. On the con plan, we first want to click Add in the Consolidated Plan submenu. And this is, um, well, go ahead. We'll jump into IDIS and we'll show exactly what this looks like. So, with me, just as I uh, start sharing my screen, log into IDIS. Econ plan, you're first going to want to go to what we call the Econ Planning Suite. The Econ Planning Suite is not a separate system. It's really essentially a tab in the IS system. Uh, it is found in the Plans, Projects, and Activities. So when you log in, first click the Plans, Projects, and Activities tab, and you'll notice a number of subsections on the left-hand side of your screen. Your prep section, Consolidated Plans, Ancient Plans, and the Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, also as the Caper. Um, so we're going to look at how we create a new Consolidated Plan. So to create a new plan in the system, first we click the Add link in the Con Plan submenu. On the uh, setup screen, also known as 8025, uh, we want to enter the strategic plan beginning year and ending year. So the, these years are the our year, the strategic plan beginning year is the first program year of the con plan. So say we're getting ready to start our 2020 through 2024 program year consolidated plan. For my start year, I am going to put 2020. For the last program year of my con plan cycle. So this would be 2024. Your title uh, for your con plan, there's no official guidance for what the title should consist of. Uh, the title will be displayed on the cover and at the top of the, each page of the printed report. So this could change even after the plan is created. Next, we have the plan version. This modifies different versions of a plan for the same beginning year. The version cannot be edited after the plan has been created. Um, when you copy a plan, you always need to enter the plan version ID as it was entered when the uh, con plan was first created. So it is, as a practice, it's always best to tr keep the plan version as simple as possible, either a, a new value or very not characters, no capital. Something that's easy to copy over. So, for adding a new blank template, we're going to keep the amendment section as not applicable. Now, new blank template by default, the system will check all of our uh, program, all of your PD programs. If you receive a certain um, CPD, such as if you don't receive HOPLA funds, just go ahead and unselect it. If you don't receive ESG, unselect it in the same with CDBG and home. So remember that you are looking at what is checked for params included. And selection must be indicated in order to create the plan. So if you don't have any check marks for any of these programs, then you're not going to be able to create a plan. You'll probably receive an error message at the top of the screen. Housing trust funds, um, receipts 
would most likely select yes. If you are a subgrantee that you receive uh, CDEF um, funds from a state, you would uh, select yes. Next, for consolidated plan four, um, make sure that you select one of the three uh, subgrantee of grantee. You can have grantee, this would be your regular entitlement, state and entitlement grantee part of a home consortium, and this is very important for all consortium members out there today, only the lead entity of a home consortium can create uh, the consolidated plan. So you are a lead entity setting up your con plan for the, your consortia, you would select the consortia type. If you're a lead entity setting up a regional con plan, you would select regional. So you're going to select grantee. Next, and um, you all know this when you do add a new template, if you created a previous con plan in the system and added alternate data sources, those sources will automatically be added to your new con plan. You can choose whether or not you want those sources included. So if you do not want them included in your plan, you can check the box listed in the do not include in plan column. You will want to select a public housing agency. You will not be able to create your plan unless you select a PA. And I kind of jump the gun a little bit. Um, you will simply just select the PA button. And you can easily find your PHA by just clicking the search button. And that will generate a list of all of the housing authorities within your area. In your region, it may take you a little bit to find the um, right authority. So once you do select your housing authority, just go ahead and cl uh, click the select button. Look to make sure everything has been entered correctly, and then click save. Great. And you have successfully created your consolidated plan. Uh, default, you'll be taken to the con plan submenu, but if you want to make sure that your plan has been listed in the con plan list, uh, you can just click the cancel button and then you'll list your new plan with your new start year with your total con plan list. All right, so. Then you add a new blank template in IDS. I'm going to discuss the way of how you could create a new con plan. Come the previous con plan. So I'm going to jump out of IDIS and we're just going to read about how you would create a new con by copying the previous con plan. When you a new con plan by copying the previous con plan, it is important to first make note of the year and version of the plan to be copied. You can do this by clicking the search um, link in the con plan submenu and taking a note of looking at your con plan list and making sure that you identify the plan that you want to copy. Sometimes you may have multiple con plans for the same cycle. They, some may have been amendments, some may have been um, corrections. So it's best to look at your most recently re recent con plan that is marked review and completed, and then take note of the version ID and the start year. For on copy screen, after you click copy the con plan submenu, you want to enter the source year and version from the plan that's going to be copied. So ensure that you enter the version exactly as it appeared in the previous plan. So if you're creating your 2020 to 2024 con plan by being your 2015 through 2019 con plan, you'll enter 2015 in the source con plan start year. And you will enter the exact version ID that was uh, originally elected for that con plan. 
for the start year and end year and Vern for your new con plan. You would enter 2020 for the start year, 2024 for the end year, and any unique identifier that uh, you to use for your version ID. And when you're, anytime you are creating a new plan, you will ignore the if amendment uh, draft menu. And just click the copy button, and then you would uh, that would create your new con plan. Again, for construction grantees, only the lead entity can copy plans. So if you are a participating member of a home consortium, so your lead entity has created your consolidated plan in IIS. Once the lead has created the plan, the system will automatically create a template in IIS for um, you to use for your entitlement program. There is a number of resources on HUD Exchange that you can use to help you through these processes. Um, we suggest always looking at the con plan in the IIS desk guide, as well as the quick guides that we have as well. And there are specific quick guides that um, are for state and entitlement grantees, for re grantees, and consortia grantees as well. These guides provide step by step instructions that you can use to help. Create your con plan, you, either by adding a new blank template or by copying a previous version. And for some reminders for consortia grantees. The plans and action plans can only be created by the consortia lead entity. As I just uh, mentioned a little bit ago, when the lead entity creates the con plan or a year two to five annual action plan in the IIS, um, the system will automatically add that template for the participating entitlement grantees. The participating members would then use that template to rip on their entitlement programs, whether it's CDBG, ESG, or even HOPWA. And you would report on all home program um, requirements activities in their content and action plan. And it, only the lead entity can submit the con plan or annual action plan in IDIS. So a participating member, after you've updated your uh, template, it's practice to notify your lead entity so that they know to allow uh, when uh, so their idea of when they, they when they can submit the plan. Because once they submit their plan, the system will automatically submit the plan or action plan for all participating grantees as, as well. Okay, hey, Rob, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to talk a little bit about the con plan template. Ben. Um, I see the questions coming in. That's great. Uh, please use that Q&A pod. We're going to answer those live uh, as we can. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll go through those and we'll curate them. And at the end, we'll um, we'll field questions from you. So keep those coming to you. Um, now, we've talked about how to create the comp plan. We'll talk about what's actually in the comp plan intent split and how to complete it and fill it out. So there are seven sections in the con plan template. So in uh, IDIS, you're going to see seven different sections with a number of different screens. There are uh, in the AD screens that start with AD. So those are all your sort of setup screens, the ES screens, which are executive summary, the PR screens, which talk about your planning process, where you, you talk about how you've conducted your consolidated plan, the N screens, which is your needs assessment, uh, MA, your market analysis, your housing market analysis, MP is the strategic plan, and the AP screens are that first year action plan that, remember, is embedded within your five year comp plan. I'm going to walk you through what you're going to see uh, when you go in there. Um, every section of uh, screens or ages, sorry, we sort of edited screens in the old days of, uh, of IDS, um, but sort of the different web pages that you'll go to. 
uh, with screens. Uh, they'll have tables, have short answer fields, have text boxes. Um, each field is going to have a prompt next to it um, that will communicate to you HUD's baseline expectation for the response. Um, and uh, some of the fields, uh, you know, they'll be pretty clear about what you can add in them. Um, at a lot of the fields, you'll find some links that allow you to provide more detail. Um, you can upload, you can add uh, custom tables, you can add images. Uh, those text fields that you find there are going to have a couple tools there at the top. Uh, simple formatting tools such as bold, under and italicize, bullets, spell. Um, and I do want to call out that you do not want to use that uh, the paragraph for the HTML tools, um, those are problematic, so please don't use those. Uh, so those text boxes that you'll have there will expand as you enter text, and they're going to dynamically expand. Uh, there's no vertical scrolling in there. Uh, you want to make that, that box a little bigger, you can. You can just drag the right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, you can expand that box and make a little more room for yourself. So you've got 4,000 character limit, um, so you can, you can um, sorry CD reps out there, but uh, you, you have 4,000 characters in the, uh, those text boxes there. Remember that's including any hidden characters in there. Um, so uh, make sure you, you're a little bit short of that 4,000 characters. I'm sure your reps would appreciate that. Um, let's see. Oh, pasting. Yes. So um, you paste in uh, does support some minimal formatting. Uh, we do ask that you use those little um, widgets there. Uh, the little text, paint text, or paste from Word widget um, that will uh, help from getting a lot of gobbledygook in your screens when you um, you download them. So you have those little hidden characters in there. So use those those widgets there, those paste from widgets, to paste from text or Word, so you don't get uh, strange um, symbols. Um, next. Okay. Uh, next. Um, a question about this too. Uh, so within the needs assessment and market analysis sections, uh, there are data that are in these uh, static tables. Um, and in each table, depending on the table it is, you're going to see one of four things. Um, and I'll tell you which it is and the availability of the data that are called in the table. You're going to see one of four things. Um, you're going to see the default HUD provided data uh, filling the entire table. Or you'll see it filling some but not all of the table. So parts of those either it's not available or the expectation is you will provide that data. Um, or there is no HUD provided data to fill the table. It's empty. And in case uh, you'll need to provide those responses from your own data sources. Or the fourth one, you have provided data in lieu of the HUD provided default data. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, depending on where you are, in the con plan, uh, one or more of those, uh, one of those things will be true. So as I'm going to completely fill, partially populate, you provide some, um, it's empty, and you provide it at all. Um, so uh, in the first case, that uh, the data source is provided data um, will be identified as related to you. So your data, based on who you are, will populate the table. Um, in the cases, you're going to need to tell us um, where uh, that's coming from. So if you're providing it, you need to make sure that you note that data is from. Um, and select, uh, we'll talk more later, but you can select uh, also um, alternate uh, sources. And you should be seeing the updated uh, AS CHAS data um, to the 2015 set. So you should be seeing that. If not, um, it's a uh, I'll submit uh, a question um, to ask a question, and we'll see what's going on there. Uh, this is alternate data. Um, you are able to use alternate data in some of the sections. You'll click that button. Um, that'll make the table, table editable. The uh, system will then walk you through uh, a high description of the data. Uh, not all of those fields are required. Here. Um, there will be buttons. Uh, one is survey data and one is administrative data. Just quickly here, a survey is informal surveys and formal local studies. Uh, so either those 
are considered survey data. Uh, most study is one that's um, um, you know, developed with uh, social science methods. Uh, and this one is um, this one that's uh, crafted yourself. The administrative source would be something like permits records, uh, code enforcement records, uh, other state and uh, local national sources like the HMDA, uh, data on a plant, something like that. So you can add those other uh, sources as administrative data. Uh, we do want to note that once a source is added, an alternate data source is ad added, it will be available as an alternate data source for the data table in the needs assessment and our market analysis sections. And this data source will remain in the system in perpetuity. Uh, so the next time you create a plan, you have to uh, deselect it to say you don't want to use it in your future plans. Otherwise, it will live in IIS forever. Uh, as we mentioned, there are a number of places at the end of fields to add additional information um, after at the bottom of table, text boxes, a couple down, down there. Um, there's one for adding a peg image. There's one where you can add some additional text. You can custom table. Just click those links and then follow the prompts on how to uh, The CPD maps is not currently working, so please don't use that. Uh, but feel free to use the add, in, add JPEG, text, or able if you need to add some more information. Each field, uh, almost every field, but definitely every section, is going to be a regulatory citation to give you some guidance as to what, are, what is HUD asking for here. In addition to the prompts, is going to be the citation. So this is the requirement that you're fulfilling. So in this case, housing needs assessment is 24 CFR. 9305 A, B, and C. So you uh, want to know which regulatory requirement you're meeting, that's it. Uh, um, you can requirements in the regulations. You can go directly to the Code of Federal Regulations um, at uh, uh, ER, and the link there in the um, Google ECFR to find it. Please also consult the exchange. Lots of great resources there. And of course, here's your app. And you're all done. Remember, you submit your comp plan through IDIS. This is the official submission. Submit by your review deadline and no later than August 16th. Do not wait until August 13th, 14th, 15th. Allow some time for technical difficulties. Um, we really encourage you to uh, do this well in advance of your deadline or when you want to submit it. Make all the required attachments signed and ready if you don't know what those are. Again, to your CBD rep and make sure you confer with them what their expectations are that attached and audit in the IS, what they want to have each of them, what they want to have FedEx. That's clear before, well before that deadline. Before, you can use the quality check button located there. Uh, pop out a number of error messages to show missing information or some other issues. Uh, those, just scroll through those. See if there's something that flags um, that you need to address. Uh, some of them, uh, and a lot of them may not apply. They're really meant to sort of call out things uh, for your attention. Like, did you mean to leave this empty? Um, however, there may be some things issue in there that are real issues that will result in plan being rejected as incomplete. So uh, make use of that. Uh, go through and see which ones apply. Um, it's a tool, um, though a lot of them are just sort of AI to let you know that there's something missing here. Uh, you do not need to clear that QC before you submit. If you all those error messages mean, I'll look at Appendix A of the desk guide. Talks about those error messages there. To submit it, drop down, change the status to submitted, hit save, and you're on your. Sort of, uh, we want this time while we have your attention to call new planning requirements. I remember taking policy questions today. We would remind you of these things again while we have your attention. If you have any policy questions, um, make sure you get your CPD rep and check out the HUD exchange. 
on broadband access. So all plans created after January 1, 2018 must address the availability of broadband access. Requirement for consultation and a requirement in the housing market analysis. The nation requirements are that you talk to private and, pri and private organizations about access, including local ISPs, and service providers, and organizations who are involved in narrowing the digital divide. In market analysis, you want to the broadband needs of housing that is occupied by low and moderate income households. You need to um, you analyze that, that, that uh, based on uh, access for moderate income neighborhoods. This should be a local and a state specific analysis. It's going to look at specific broadband needs such as wiring, cut into activity within household units, and level of competition in the local market for internet services. And some data sources available. That we'd like to go. Um, no broadband map. And so um, the uh, data availability uh, that FCC puts out. Again, not any. Uh, I want to note that there's not any specific goals or projects that are mandated here, and it's really at your discretion to determine how you include this. this Five year strategic plan and your annual actions plans. However, the the consultations and the analysis is required. Next one, the first one's broken. Now we're moving to resiliency. Wait, the vulnerability of housing occupied by a low mod households to disasters. Both consultations, so additional consultation and and housing market and that requirements. You can talk to agencies involved in land management, public lands, water resources, agencies involved in emergency management, emergency response. Make sure you can with those. And uh, housing market analysis, talk about the volatility of lot in low mod occupied housing to natural disasters associated uh, with uh, change. So the uh, possibility, the increasing likelihood of impact um, due to climate change, impactful disasters. Remembering these consultations, um, that's all going to be noted in in the comp plan. So as you do these consultations, you're going to need to plug them into your comp plan so that we know that you've You've done the results of those consultations. Again, some data sources. Um, you can state or, or local FEMA approved hazard mitigation plan. Um, you can have to look at uh, a great guide called the Community Resilience Planning Guide um, about the uh, Institute for and Technology. And that's available. Uh, go to uh, www.nst.gov. Just search for this document and it'll pop right up. So. Again, there's no specific goals or projects, and it's at your discretion on how you um, this, but the information is required. In vision centers, so in vision centers, uh, so this is a HUD initiative um, that's seeking to power resi empower residents of HUD assisted housing to become responsible homeowner renters out in the private market. Uh, check out CPD notice 1804. Uh, talks about in vision centers. There are also, again, uh, there's a consultation requirement here. You need to talk to PHAs and the residents of public housing. You also need to talk to businesses uh, and the private sector. So you need to consult them. And then those consultation requirements are going to be in that notice. Inventor uh, analysis may uh, end up being included in the needs assessment or your market analysis. Maybe include strategic plan efforts um, around revitalization, economic empowerment, your public housing priorities, objectives, anthropy strategy, and any kind of coordinated efforts you may have with the business community with NPHA. Uh, none um, are opportunity zones. Uh, so required element, um, I'd like to mention uh, the opportunity zones. So this was created in the 2017 Tax Act to provide some tax benefits for investments. And designated areas, the areas de designated as opportunity zones. Um, every state has opportunity zones. I'd really encourage you to consider this designation as an area tar target investment. Uh, that's to note that opportunity zones may overlap with uh, neighborhood revitalization strategy areas, or be part of a NSA strategy, or other targeted, graphically targeted efforts. 
aware of opportunity zones, know which ones are there. And I would like to see you coordinate your investment with with private sector investment, so private sector investment coordination. And um, last but not least, but it's not last, <laughs> Section 108. So HUD did want us to remind you that uh, Section 8 loans have some pre-application planning and citizen participation, public notice, public involvement requirements. So it's really wise to address those in your comp plan and strategic plan rather than having to go back and amend it. Uh, so I want to make note that states, you need to address Section 108 in your method of distribution. Uh, and again, if you have questions about this, reach out to your rep. Um, note that the uh, citizen participation requirements um, for individually funded projects after the 108 award still apply. Um, seeing um, amendments that have to, that involve new projects funded 108, um, that's to be done um, as as after those commitments are made and as those those plan actions are done. But there are some pre um, pre game planning and participation requirements you can get out of the way at, at the plan initially. And also, oh yes, and uh, existing plan section 108 debt service should be discussed in the end. Um, so if you have a 108 loan, I think they have one, you need to talk about debt service in your comp plan. There are some very specific pre-submit requirements for entitlement communities. Your uh, field list and uh, HUD, this financial management division, uh, they can help you make sure that, that your meet requirements. And this is not complete. We'll remind you. States as well have some very specific requirements. Make sure you're uh, uh, talking to your field office about that. And does that matter? So remember, so all your disaster, CDBG disaster recipients, uh, yes, the comp requirements are way for DR funding when it's appropriated. Do that so that you can get that funding out right away. Disaster funding, it's emergency funding. But that waiver, we want to remind you that waiver is time limited. That the actual um, time limitation depends on the appropriation. I want to remind you is that your DR funds may now be subject to comp plan requirements. Um, so make check out this guidance that we have linked here and consult with your with your CPD rep and of course always that exchange but make sure that you're aware we just want to remind you that um, you may have now requirements um, apply your DR funding so uh, pass it back to you about to talk about to plan and action plan thank you Rob Now we get to uh, the fun stuff. So, now in. Yeah. The strategic plan and the action plan option. So, now it's about really how the strategic plan aligns with the annual action plan and how that aligns with your projects and then how the projects align with your IDIS activities. So it's important to keep in mind that the information entered a strategic plan is to cover the entire cycle of the plan. So if you are set on a five-year cycle, your strategic goals will need to cover that five-year period. You will want to identify all goals for the five years that you plan to accomplish uh, throughout your cycle. You may not be working towards them every single year, but you want to think five years out. What goals do I want to accomplish? What are my priority needs for the first? And what goals are it going to take to accomplish those priority, to meet those priority needs? Answer your goals on the SP45 goal screen in the strategic plan. Setting up your strategic goals, you'll need to select all outcome indicators that to specify the proposed numeric accomplishments jurisdiction hopes to achieve over the course of the strategic plan. The first year action plan 
much data entered in the strategic plan will filter into the action screens. For example, the AP15 anticipated resources table will not be editable in first year action plan, but the funding information for the first year was already was already been entered into the SP35 anticipated resources screen in your strategic plan. So, but when adding in, so when you go to do your AP, your anticipated resources for your first year action plan, you edit your table, just look back at what was entered for the first year for your uh, on SP35 table strategic plan, and make sure that those amounts for the year column are for your first year action plan. And then you set up the next year's action plan, you're able to edit that table for that specific year. Now, adding your annual goal on the AP20 goal screen of your first year action plan, you'll only, you can only select the goals that were first identified on the P45 goal screen of the strategic plan. You may have to, you may not want to add all of your strategic goals that you identified. You only want to add that you anticipate in uh, making accomplishments for in that specific uh, program year, but you won't be able to add any new goals that weren't identified in your strategic plan. And that's really important to keep in mind for when you do go ahead and create uh, your future action plans between years two and five of your cycle. If you have goals that weren't have new goals that come up that you want to meet that were not identified in your strategic plan, you're going to be able to add them in your action plan without first amending your consolidated plan. An annual goal on AP20, I select it from the drop down list of strategic goals. When set up those goals, you'll need to select the same goal outcome indicators that were initially selected for that strategic goal in the SP45 screen. Of course, the values that you enter may be different, but it's important to find the alignment between how strategic goals are set up, how the annual goals are set up. So when you set up your annual goal, make sure you select the single outcome indicators that were selected in the strategic plan section for that same goal. Now, discussing projects in more detail later on, but when you go to add your project in the annual action plan, you, if you also want to select the same outcome indicators for the associated goal uh, that, or for the annual goal that that project is associated to. And that will give an example of what this looks like. So, why do we do all this? Why are we aligning? the strategic goals, annual goal, the goal outcome indicators for the strategic goals, annual goals, and the uh, projects in the action plan? Well, when setting up your activities in IDIS, you have to use the suggested CDBG matrix code or home activity types that paired with each goal outcome indicator that's selected in the associated project. These all communicators have a suggested pairing with the CDBG matrix code or home activity type. And these are listed in Appendix B of the plan desk guide in IDIS. The ultimate reason why you want to make sure these correctly so that you can set yourself up for accurate CAPER reporting when you go ahead and create your CAPER at the end of your program year. Generate from how uh, different sections are set up in IDIS. They, gen they pull information from your strategic plan, from your action plan, and from your projects. Next diagram will give a little more clear example of the alignment. So you, again, you start with your SP45 goals with your AP20 goals. And the AP35 projects in your action plan, 
you assign each project to a goal and select the same goal outcome indicators that was originally selected for annual goal and strategic goal. And then when you set up your activities, the makes codes or home activity types uh, for the activity that you are creating should be aligned with the outcome indicators that were initially selected the setup of your content and action plan. So when you are creating your uh, goals, your strategic goals, and want to keep in mind the type of activities that you eventually see being added to these goals through projects. You want to make sure that the type of activities that would be on this goal would be meet the suggested pairing of the goal outcome indicator that you'll be selecting during the goal setup. Next, we'll just an example of kind of what this could look like. So for say we have a re rehabilitate existing housing stock in a neighborhood. That's strategic goal. For the goal indicator selected, we're seeing 200 home or homeowner units to be rehabbed. Your annual goal in the first year action plan on the AP20 screen. Select the rehab, you add the rehabilitate existing housing stock option, yeah, housing stock in neighborhood X. When you go up, and you'll make sure that you're selecting the same goal outcome indicator that was selected on the SP45 screen in the strategic plan. For homeowner, homeowner units rehab. Of course, the only value you're entering is what you anticipate accomplishing for that program year. The strategic uh, goal, the value entered is what you anticipate accomplishing for a five-year period. Now, month to your project, your project in your action plan for a uh, homeowner rehab. Associate that project with the annual goal, rehabilitate existing housing stock in neighborhood X. Say you selected the uh, homeowner units rehab indicator for the annual goal, you will make sure that you select that same indicator for project to the value 40 units. Sometimes your projects may be tied to multiple goals, so the value may not always be the same as your as listed for the goal, but as long as you're selecting the same indicator, that should lead to uh, correct paper alignment when you do create your paper um, in the program here. Now, after up your project, or at a later point, you can uh, create your IIS activity. And say, for example, we have 53 Main Street uh, Rehab. It is tied to the homeowner rehab project, which is listed on the action plan. Matrix code set up for this activity is a 14A, which will align with um, homeowner units rehab. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about set projects. For each program year, grants must create new projects and add them to the AP35 project screen in the annual action plan. Pro provide a concise summary of the eligible programs or activities that will take place during the program year to address the priority needs and specific objectives identified in the strategic plan. More importantly, projects bridge Agency's activity accomplishments in IDIS with the associated annual goals selected for that primary year. The alignment between the annual action plans projects and IDIS activities is key when preparing your paper. So briefly going to go over some of the best practices and tips and tricks with projects. However, additional information such as a project setup webinar and uh, project setup up quick guide available on the HUD exchange. So after today's session, if you want to learn more about projects, we highly encourage you to go to the Consolidated Plan webpage on HUD exchange. And under the featured resources, um, you should be able to find a uh, quick for pro setting up projects as well as a webinar that speaks specifically to uh, the setup of projects in 
the annual action plan. So new projects can be set up one of two ways. Um, create a new project directly in the annual action plan through the AP35 project screen. Uh, methods should be used by all government grantees, and state grantees are encouraged to use this method too, even though state grantees are not required to add project level detail on the AP35 project screen. Um, that information is included on the AP30 uh, methods of distribution screen. But still, to ensure accurate paper reporting, grantees will need to add those projects projects to the annual action plan if their actual accomplishment data to populate correctly in the paper. So if the detail is known ahead of time, grant state grantees are encouraged to set up their projects in the action plan. If not, they can create a project in IDIS on the submenu. And then at a later point throughout the program year, they can add that project through an amendment to the uh, AP35 project screen in action plan. And the second way you create a project, you can get it in uh, the IDIS project submenu. And the recommended way to set up projects now is through the AP35 project screen in the annual action plan. A common conception among grantees that create the annual action plan by copying a prior year's action plan is that projects copied over are automatically updated to the new program year. The case when a prior year action plan is copied to create the current year action plan, it copies over the prior year projects into the current plan. So as a project is created on the AP35 project screen, is automatically added in IDIS. So as a practice, tip number one, we ask that you avoid duplicate projects in the system. Make sure someone else doesn't set up the same project separately. Someone may be setting up projects in the action plan where some, while someone else is setting up projects in IDIS. So it's important to make sure that before you create a project, whether it's in the action plan or in IDIS, a project search in your project's IDIS submenu and select program year um, you're setting your action plan up for and just remember that there isn't already projects created for that program year. If there is, you can simply add them to your action plan instead of creating a new project. If you don't have a project created for that program year, you can create, create a new project through the E35 project screen. Once you create a project in your plan, it will automatically be added to IDIS. How you create a project in IDIS, it is the project will not automatically be added to your AP35 projects table. So that is why, which again, we recommend setting your projects in the annual action plan because it ensures that your project is associated with the correct annual goal and that can set you up, you set yourself up for better um, CAPER reports when you do go ahead and create your CAPER at the end of the program year. Another tip, uh, I kind of just uh, briefly touched on projects not included in the AP35 screen will link to the CAPER. So if you're only creating your projects in IDIS and not adding them to the uh, action plan, then that project is not going to be associated with the um, pop the accomplishment data that populates on the caper. So again, make sure that how you choose to add your project, your IDIS projects, that you in fact add them to EP35 projects um, screen, whether that's by creating a new project or adding an existing project. That can set yourself up for better reporting in the case. When you are setting up your project detail 
and this again on the AP35 project screen of the action plan. You want to make sure you select the angle that project is associated to and enter the goal outcome indicators. As we suggest indicated before, you want to use the same goal outcome indicator that was selected for the annual goal that that project is associated to. Um, tells about the project setup is the 835 projects table lists projects added for the action plan. It also lists a number on, on the table. It is called sort column. It's important to not confuse the sort number for the IDIS project number. The sort number just indicates what order the projects are listed in the action plan on the 85 screen. That number does not indicate the actual IDIS project ID number. The number is created as soon as you create that project in IDIS, IDIS or the action plan. Um, it's system generated and you are not able to edit it. Other projects um, at the program year, uh, the program year should be at the top of the project detail screen. And make sure that that program year is the year for which function plan that you're create that you're working in. If you're working in a creating 2019 annual action plan, and your project says 2017, that means you have a priority project. You want to remove that project and create a new project for the 2019 program year. And that takes us to creating a new year two to five annual action plan. Now, I am going to turn this back over to you for that. Thanks, Ben. That was really helpful. Remember those tips? Uh, make sure you set up your comp plan so your caper is going to work. Um, and then subsequent action plans. So I'm going to really quick. I know it's a little after 11 and we've got a lot of questions. We're going to be able to get to them. I'm going to go through this really quick. But remember, we do have um, our specifically on uh, creating your annual action plan, setting up projects. So um, so there's going to be two ways. Uh, so, so yeah, so here, here's where we are. It's March 2021. You just got back from Cancun. Okay, six over St. Louis. But anyhow, uh, you're wrapping up your annual planning process. Time to create that year two annual action plan. Um, remember, you can copy or create new. So what we would just highlight is that um, when you copy that, that plan, uh, you want to make a year two. Remember that it's buried in your con plan. So um, when you go to copy, you're going to go to copy, um, and you're going to already have looked in your um, con plan to remember what version number it was um, and that source year, of course. Um, I'm going to enter the new program year and version to copy that out of your con plan. And just going to put that source year. <clears throat> so, um, you know, 2020 and your version number, uh, whatever letter string you had there. Uh, the and you're going to copy that to 2021. So there, um, it's buried in there, but it is in there. So make sure you put that program year and that version number. Um, and uh, of course, if you want to add that, just start from scratch, um, create that new action plan. Um, you want to add it in that uh, new uh, program, give it a title, give it a version number, select your program, and associate it with that con plan. Make sure you do that. that uh, your correct program selected, and either with the con plan, don't forget to do that last step, because uh, otherwise, you'll have an orphan action plan. So uh, those fields cannot be edited once you save them. Um, so make sure that uh, you've got those you want them. And then I'm going to jump right into questions. Thanks, sir. So, Ren, we have quite a few questions coming in, um, starting from the top. Is um, the data consolidated plan says 2011 to 2013. Uh, first, is this accurate? 
And then when will this data be updated? So we created a new consolidated plan after January 1, 2019. Then the data that populated should be the 2011 to 2015 ACS CHAS data. There was an issue in IDIS where the labeling, even for plans that were created after January 1, um, the data was reflective of 2011 to 2015. However, the labeling at the bottom of the table still said 2009 to 2013. Um, that should have has since been uh, corrected in the last IDIS release. Um, if you are still unsure about your data, always you can always submit a um, question through HUD Exchange AAQ, and we'd be more than happy to uh, kind of just take a look, um, give you a call, discuss it. But the data for all new plans created after January 1, the data should be the 2011-2015 ACS CHAS data. Thanks, Ben. Uh, next question. Uh, do if we need more than 4,000 characters to answer a question in the IDIS ConPlan template list? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and um, uh, you know, we know from experience, having completed some of these, that in some areas you've got plenty of room, and other ones you feel really squeezed to uh, uh, run well. Um, so uh, there are some places where you can use the table. Um, you can uh, add additional text to the end of the question. Uh, make use of those. Um, get creative with uh, with you know bullet language, maybe uh, make your language a little more concise, brief. Then if that's not enough, and I know there's some places where it won't be, um, you can attach the, you can attach documents to your con plan. Um, I know that personally I provide a pretty detailed summary of public participation, and you can attach that to your to your con plan. Um, so talk to your, if you're going to attach anything, make sure you talk to your CPD rep to know to expect it. Uh, but that's one of the ways that you can provide a greater um, detailed response. And make sure in your in your response within the template that you point to if somewhere else, uh, make a point to it so uh, the reader knows where to find it. And your rep that's reviewing it, of course. Good. Thanks, Rob. Um, next question, how to set up our annual action plan to make the CAPER work more smoothly at the end of the year? So, when setting up your action plan, it's, there's a number of different things that you, you want to be mindful of um, in order to ensure an accurate CAPER. The um, thing is, make first making sure your action plan is associated to your consolidated plan um, if you're in your first year action plan this is easy because the action plan is a part of the con plan template but if you're working your years two to five annual action plans you want to make sure that that plan is associated with the con plan because if it's not if you somehow create a standalone action plan then that action plan is not associated to your strategic plan that is set up in your consolidated plan. So you make sure that the association of the action plan is tied to the con plan. Next, make your projects are for the that are AP35 screen are set up for the um, the program year. If you create your uh, year two to five action plan by copying a previous action plan, make, make that you remove project, the prior year projects that copied over, and then create new projects for that program year. But if you continue with prior year projects, then those projects are still for reporting for the previous year, and they won't accurately uh, populate, those accomplishments won't accurately be reflected in your row five screen of the caper. When setting up your annual goals, make sure that you're using the same goal output indicators that were elected for the strategic goal in the con plan. And then when setting up the projects, you use the same goal outcome indicators 
as the goals associate that that project's associated to. And uh, additionally, that those goal outcome indicators selected are correctly with the CBG matrix code or home activity types that you set your IDIS activities up for. The sources on HUD Exchange um, says uh, recordings or CAPER webinars that we've done in the past that uh, speak more detail to what to look for in your action plans and um, when you create an action plan amendments, what you could be doing, doing to uh, prep for, for a CAPER reporting. But um, we do anticipate doing more of those CAPER webinars um, this summer. So keep a lookout for anything on HUD Exchange, for any um, notification, uh, for any upcoming webinars that we're going to put together for setting up the CAPER. Great. Thanks, Ben. Next question. Perhaps I have some fun left over from past years. Should I include these in the newest action plan? And if so, how? Good question. Uh, thanks. So, um, first, you talk to your CPD rep, uh, let them know you've got prior year funds, how they uh, expect to see those in present, uh, discussed in your uh, action plan, in your strategic plan. Um, and so, be mindful of, uh, of grounding rules. Um, but the answer is, the short answer is yes. Uh, you, there is a spot to talk about um, funds that you're using in the uh, they'll be using in the, the first year, um, and talk about resources available. And Ben, which screen is that? I'm forgetting the number. Do you know it offhand? Uh, but there's a place in that you can talk about uh, your your funds that you're you're carrying forward. And again, make sure you you in addition to where you enter them. That you discuss them correctly with the public um, when you plan out and you're making sure you're following all your citizen participation requirements for describing the use of prior year funds. And talk to, talk to CBD rep about that. And Ben, do you know what's offhand? I can't remember which the screen number is for that. Yeah, yeah it's the AP15 um, screen. And there is a line called prior year resources. And you can uh, expended funds from prior years or unallocated funds from prior years in that prior year resources line on the AP15 screen of your action plan. Thank you. Um, next question. Ensure that our year two through five action plans is associated to our consolidated plan. Um, they ask if we copy the previous plan. Is that one? Yeah. Um, so, is this how do we ensure the our year two to five stays associated with our consolidated plan if we copy the previous plan each? Year. Okay. Yes. So, in the 26 administration screen of action of the action plan that you intend to copy, um, there's the plan association section that tells you the constant starter and the version ID of the con plan that that current action plan is associated to. So before you copy the plan, just go to that AD26 administration screen and check the association of your con plan. Um, if that, if the con plan that's shown looks like it's your most recently uh, updated con plan, then go ahead and copy that um, plan because then the association will copy over into your new action plan. Because when you copy a plan, Con plan association copies over into the new con plan. If you set up a new action plan by adding a blank template, and you may want to do this if you had a recent con plan that was ended and you want to uh, your new action plan is associated with that con plan, then you can 
create a new blank template and then manually associate, associate that plan on setup with manually associate that action plan to that con plan on the um, setup action plan. An option that you can do, if you amended your con plan and the new plan version is no longer, or the version that your current action plan is tied to is no longer the most recently updated con plan, uh, when you go to create your new action plan, instead of being the previous action plan, you could copy the plan. So you would go through the same steps as you normally would when copying your annual action plan by clicking the copy link in the annual action plan submenu. But for the source AAP start year and plan version, you enter the information for your new new uh, newly updated con plan. And so you would enter your first your program year. So say if your con plan was recently amended, um, you would enter the sir of that con plan. Uh, let's just say it was 2015. And for source AAP plan version, you enter the version ID of that new con plan amendment. And you would enter your new annual action plan information just as you normally would, click copy, and then the new annual action plan would be created and initiated with your new con plan. So the ways you can create the new um, action plan and ensuring that the association is correct to that plan. Next question. This asks, I have an approved action plan and I kept in the per year's projects. I've audited the action plan. What should I do to fix this? That, that's, that's a real world situation there. So if it's not approved, so you submitted it, but it's not approved, you can ask for it to be rejected, and then you can revise it, uh, contact your rep, and say, oops, I made a mistake, please reject it, um, allow me fix it. If it's been approved, you need to, um, you're gonna need to amend it to pull those out. Um, and again, we have a whole uh, webinar recording about amending um, emission plans, uh, creating a copy and creating an amendment. So, um, if it, actually, I would suggest that you do submit a question to um, ecompline, idea compline, ask a question desk, and we can look at the specifics of what's going on there, and give you um, the best that we can. But showing that it's not approved yet, and you can just get it rejected. All right. Thanks. Question. What exactly does the ad survey administrative data do? do? We need to add our own data. Is this required? Uh, so, the ad survey is the um, so when you want to alt add alternate data sources, it's not required um, unless there is no default data available. For in order to add that alternate data, you need to identify the source information on the 8025 administration screen of the con plan. So when you go to the 8025 administration screen, you'll see two uh, buttons that say add survey data, add administrative data. Um, for where is most applicable, you would select that button and then enter in the, there's a series of questions that ask for information about that data source. And you would first need to add that source information before you can uh, select the alternate data button, the desired data table, in whether it's the needs assessment or the market analysis. You don't have to, if the default data populated and you want to use default data, you're not required to add your own data. Only um, default data is not available, um, or you are to add your own alternate data. But sometimes you, the default data may not be the compelled source to tell your story in your community, and you may have uh, other data that more accurately reflects your needs, your 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 uh, community. So that's one of where you may want to add alternate data 
instead of default data. Um, to do that, you would go to your AD25 administration screen and add select uh, add administer survey source administrative source buttons and just add information about your um, off source. Good deal. Thanks, Ben. Next question. More than one person from the agency has permission in IDIS to enter information for the consolidated plan and action plan templates. Thanks. Well, yes, not only can they, but they should. Um, uh, if somebody wins the lottery tomorrow and they don't show up to work, uh, you want to make sure you have more than one person that get in there. Uh, so each person's roles uh, in IDIS are um, you can um, your some things your your grantee administrator um, can do, uh, but also you can you can re submit that form for uh, the the access request form and indicate that that person has um, the role responsibility or the right to to um, edit the plan action plan caper. Uh, um, and, and if you don't know how to do that and you want to know how to do that, submit a question uh, to IDIS, ask a question, and we can help you with that. Uh, um, but yeah, I wanted to emphasize that not only should can, but you really should have, have, have duplication of roles, um, just if somebody goes out sick, or like I said, win the lottery. Um, and also make sure that you are clear about who is doing what when, um, so that you're not writing over each other or undoing each other's work. Um, and like don't have about having more than one person, but please, please, please don't be the only one who can do it. Thanks. Uh, next question. I said that Heroes works best with Internet Explorer and can have problems within Chrome. Is it true for the con for the con plan template? Is Chrome an all right browser to use? With all HUD online systems, Internet Explorer is the recommended browser choice. Um, so, yeah, say, um, always, as a best practice, always best to make sure you're using Internet Explorer. Um, you can use Google Chrome, but you may be susceptible to maybe some more errors. But um, HUD's recommended browser has always been Internet Explorer. Thanks, ben. We've already created a project in IDIS that has draws. Can we add it to the AP35 screen, or will that cause a duplication? Um, so yeah, that, that's a good question. This is kind of a, a, a question. That question. So if if that is already drawing down, it's associated with an action plan. Uh, we hope. Um, and so it can stay living in that action plan. Um, you can need to do things that uh, were discussed in other action plans in in following years. Um, you don't need to bring the forward um, to your your action plan um, every year. There there is we do have a discussion about multi year projects um, and what an artist you can go see that. Uh, but the short answer is you don't you should do that. Um, you continue to undertake an activity start last year and the next year without bringing it into your your current. Um, Action Prep may want you to talk about it in the narrative, um, but uh, no, you don't need to. Um, and, uh, I don't know, Ben, there there could be some issues potentially if you bring it forward, correct? I think if you, and this may be like what state grant to you set up their project in IDIS and looking to add their project to um, end of their program year. Um, should it, if anything, I think, yes, even if if the project has activities that have draws, draws on it, you can add it to your action plan later in the program year through an amendment. Um, it shouldn't have any impact that I'm aware of. We have time for uh, maybe uh, one, maybe two more questions. One more question if it's a long one, two more if they're short. Um, we've covered this a little bit, but it's worth probably going back to because we've gotten quite a few questions about it. Um, this is an 
staff. So we did our 20 to 20, 20 to 2024 con plan template in IDIS a while ago, and it looked like it is drawing the 2009 to 2013 data. How to date or verify if it had that data? The easiest way is to go back to your 8025 administration screen and look all the way at the bottom of the screen, there's status bar, um, there's timestamp at the bottom of the screen underneath the status bar, and that tells you the line, the status of your plan was changed. So if you had not submitted your review or changed the status at all, it would still be in progress and that timestamp should be reflective of when you created the con plan. If you created that template in 2018, then your is definitely reflective of the 2009 to 2013 because the um, that only integrated into the updated data is only integrated starting January 1st, 2019, uh, and that would only be reflected in, in plans that were created after January 1st. So our plan was has a 2018 date at the bottom of that 8025 administration screen. Then your uh, plan is not automatically updated with the 2009-2013 data. Um, to resolve that, you may want to you, know, you get a new plan by copying that con plan. Uh, that way, our narrative is copied over into the new template, and the data tables would then be updated with the new 2011-2015 uh, data. All right, Ben. So time for one last question. This person asks, I am a new director. When do you suggest that an organization begin working on the 2020 to 2024 con plan template? Our question, great last question, and congratulations um, on being a new director. The quick answer is when you hang up the phone. Well, actually, seriously, if, if you are due, um, you know, if you're program, your next cycle starts next July, you need to start now. Uh, or at least start thinking about it, getting your timeline out so you know um, the sort of targets you need to hit. Uh, but, but this, you know, we're having this now because this is the time when um, you should be thinking about um, you're out from just a year out from submitting. So you need to start thinking about it. So if you're due, if your program begins July 2020, it needs to be submitted May 15th, 2020. Um, it's the 16th. Uh, but uh, yeah, right around 45 days before your program year begins. And if you're on a different cycle, it's 45 days before program year begins. Um, or, and the, the, the absolute drop deadline drop is always the August 16th. Um, so uh, get out there um, and, and work and give yourself enough time uh, to plan out a thoughtful process and engage the public and uh, um, have a, a and that will serve you well for the next five years. And thank you. I think that brings us to the end of uh, today's session. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, just some quick reminders. Uh, we will be sending out a recording of today's session as well as the, a transcript and a copy of the PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides. Um, we will be sending them out sometime next week. Uh, um, are made available and they will be posted on HUD Exchange. So keep an eye out on HUD Exchange to see when um, the power slides and recording of today's webinar would be posted. We'll also send an email out to uh, all participants today as well. Great. Thank you. And then one last reminder that, that if you're feeling completely lost, go to the HUD, HUD Exchange. Tons of information, including an actual timeline on completing. Um, and in the citizen participation guide, has a sample one in there. Thank you. And again, if you have any other questions that we did not get to today, please submit and ask a question through how to get. Then have a great rest of the day.